host Tina Khan, and I'm sitting here with Omnia from the Netherlands. Hi. Hey. All right, so can you guys please take a moment to introduce yourselves and what instruments you play? Um, yeah, I'm, I'm Jenny. I play uh, Celtic harp. I play piano. I play hurdy gurdy. I play paolon and several other instruments, and I sing a bit. Hi, I'm Steve, and I, uh, I play lots of lots of stuff. Check it out, there's videos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's an unfair answer. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, I'm David. I uh, play mainly the sliding that we do, and I do some weird backing vocals sometimes. Cool, and how would you describe Omnia's music? It's a hard question we get asked. There's videos, check them out. There's videos! <laughs> <No>. <laughs> uh, it's, it's, a, it's a modern type of folk music with balls, so it's not like boring folk music, um, but it has deep roots in European history. Okay, and why this kind of music in particular? Do you have any specific it's ties to it? It's real music. It's basically just music with real instruments made in a, in a real passionate way for the love of nature and the love of art and the love of music. So that, that's what the, gives it strength. That's why we make this music. And it's it's the type of folk because folk is also like real music. Awesome. And uh, what does the term pagan mean to you? Pagan is just a sort of a, a collective term for all forms of um, nature religion. So from there's many people, many indigenous, all indigenous cultures worship nature, pre-Christian and pre-Islamic cultures, and all of them heaped together in the modern day usage of the word means well, nature tree huggers. So when did you form Omnia and what was your initial vision with the project? It was formed in 1996 and the initial vision was to bring people an image of the ancient world of the Celtic and Roman society of around the 2nd or 3rd century BC, which is very important for Europe, which is where your culture comes from. And our thoughts then was just to Bring, educate. Yeah, to educate, to bring back some of the, the values and thoughts of this ancient world and also the religion and the, the pantheistic aspects of it through music and, and art and, and theatre stuff. And that's how we started. All right. And uh, who are your musical influences? <laughs> Practically every form Blackbirds. Of blackbirds, yeah. Animals, <laughs> uh, indigenous music, uh, anything that has soul. There's, there's many musical instruments. Like real music. Yeah, yeah. real music. Real you music. can have like folk music from Scandinavia, from Ireland, or from Spain, or even from Afghanistan, you mm -hmm. know? It's, it's, uh, if it's real Australia. Rooted. Australia, whatever, you know? <laughs> but if it's like... It's the world. It's, yeah. World music. Everything. Yeah. Real, any, real music. Any actual world music. Any particular bands you want to mention, or that you like? Um, well, things like Irfan I find very, very beautiful. Oh, yeah. From or Bulgaria. But probably not a lot of people know that. Or there's just there's lots of stuff. We could okay. the list names of bands. Yeah. You know, it's a hard question. Yeah. Yeah. It depends question. on the mood which but one pops up in your head. Yeah. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it, yeah, it ranges from really from Eminem to Bach, you know. Yeah. It, and we just like stuff that's yeah. real and it's everything in between. And so is Omnia a spiritual experience for you more than just a fan? Well, it, well it is for me. Yeah, it, it, it encompasses my life. Also, the stuff that, that I believe in and that we believe in. So we, we've we been okay. given the chance to stand mm -hmm. on the stage, so we talk about nature. I think when you yeah. don't believe in that, then you, you're not able to be part of this. Yeah, this yeah, yeah, true. Because if you only do it as a band, it's, you, know, you don't understand it, I think. Mm. And um, what was your favorite album to write and record, and why? Oh, it's a hard one. The last. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I think the last album always has a sort of a trauma to it still because that's the last one you remember. It's always a hideous process making an album. <laughs> yeah. But just finding the songs and stuff, I think every one of them is beautiful. But I would say that, uh, so not judging the, the quality of the CD and what I, what I think of what it sounds like now, but just the process of recording, I think the first real CD, Crown of War, that we you know, that made, I think I had so much fun because that was yeah. the first CD we made together. There was a laugh. And yeah, and, and we just, so yeah, fun. we had a lot of fun. It was a very special studio, and, and, and uh, it's not my favorite album, mm -hmm. but the process was yeah. great. Yeah, yeah that was one of my fresh. favorites for a long yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And he started out as a band. There's like a battle scene for the Morrigan. Yeah. And we, we built that in the studio. That's Luca and me like, shouting <laughs> and <laughs> clanging <laughs> swords <laughs> and bits of metal <laughs> together to get this feeling of a whole battle of different people. And, Dying twenty different <laughs> times, and <then laughs> it's really, really funny just to get this vague background of battle. 
What's yeah. your process for garnering inspiration for songs and your process for songwriting, if you have one? Silence. If you can find silence in yourself, it fills with art. And the, the best process for us ever, I think, to make the best pieces, the ones we like the most, is finding that place of quiet and then suddenly hearing the sound of a song, like, like Old Man Tree. Yeah. It just appeared almost completely finished, just like that. Bam. Or, or a song like Alive that, that finds its root in a forest walk and you sit down and hear a certain kind of bird song that just it hints something like, like a, 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 something that could be a hook. In yeah. the and then the rest just flows from it. But the main inspiration is life and seeing it because you can actually see it and experience it through silence. Yeah. And um, how has your music and ideas evolved over the course of your album? Mm, good question. Well, it started from being sort of, you know, I wouldn't say reenactment, but it was like trying to find a sound that our ancestors would have made if they had these instruments 2,000 years mm -hmm. ago. And uh, something just happened be because of who we are, and we're very um, attached to nature, <laughs> we're very aware of that. That we we just noticed all the stuff going wrong, and then you just at a certain point you're on stage, you have all these people in front of you, and they listen to you. So then you just start having ideas of like if we put something in a song, maybe people will learn something. Mm. And if we tell them stuff like Steve Jeff on stage, maybe they will hear it. And we started doing that, and and then we got all these reactions of people that they feel it, they hear it, they change their lives. Or they start playing folk instruments like us, which is also really cool. Yeah. And then you get that, that kind of mix. Yeah. And you want to do more. So we all have like a political side in a way as well. Yeah. Yeah. So. so what topics are you the most passionate about and how do you feel that you contribute to these topics? The fact that the planet is alive. I think that is the main topic that, that is for us. The, the fact that every creature on this planet is a separate living entity with thoughts and feelings and passions. And that we as humans, as blundering monkeys, are tramping around through this place, not understanding that at all, and completely destroying everything because we can't actually hear them scream. We can't hear the bees scream, so we don't care. And that's just, I think that is the main topic. We should step away from just thinking about humans. I mean, I like caring about humans and people around me, but I think we've been cared about too much. There's too many of us now, and the planet can't sustain it. Mm -hmm. and we don't really want to talk about these subjects, but uh, it's got to change. Yeah. And I think that that's driving a lot of my thoughts anyway. Yeah, and that's... How about that's you? What's driving your thoughts? <laughs> What's driving my thoughts? I don't have any thoughts. Oh, Girls. <laughs> oh, of course. But they're human, so... <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I think it's uh, this, this personal awareness that we sort of, you know, want to make people aware and personal change if possible. And if loads of people do that, we might make the world, not just the human world, but the actual world, a yeah. better place. Yeah. And, you know, we have to do something. So I don't know if it helps in the bigger scheme, but at least some people are alive now. Yeah. Yeah, so every little piece helps. They wake right? up. It's like yeah. a domino effect. Yeah. Okay. So where does sense of humor and irony come into your music writing? I mean, do you think funny. people tend to misunderstand humor? that. Irony? <laughs> What is irony? Like a metal thing? Is a, yeah, is a it contains iron, I think. Oh, that's it. Contains iron. Yeah, it's very it's healthy. Metal. I think you'll reach yeah. more people with that. <laughs> Not because the thing is, is yeah. I, 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 personally, I think humor is a sign of intelligence. I think humor is the way that we deal with all the bullshit. Yeah. If you can't laugh about this, if you can't laugh about this society, you're better off just hanging yourself straight away because it's it's. It's either very, very sad or very, very funny. And He's not paying for you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. No, seriously, just not that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We cut it out. <laughs> we cut it out, yeah. uh, I completely lost my thread there. What was well, it? Yeah. Was I don't know. Genocide? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> not the genocide. Sense of humor. Yeah. Sense of humor. Yeah. Sense of humor. Yeah. 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 If you get yourself. this, you have a sense of humor. Yeah. Yeah. If you can laugh about yourself, yeah. it's, you, you become more, I don't know, introspective in a way. Mm. It's easy to cope with life and with yourself. Yep. And with the strange quirks that we all have. The best artists that we know, like the, you know, that are really good artists in whatever they do and, and uh, very intelligent, they are extremely cynical. Yeah. yeah. Really cynical. It's and just funny. And so, and funny. Yeah. 
and, and, that, and, and also humor opens people up. Yeah. So if you want to, you know, tell them something, let them laugh first, and they're yeah. open, and they're with you, and then you tell them something. Yeah. Yeah. This cool. is also something we've always done with Omnia, mixing humor with, with uh, any kind of message that we have. Yeah. Because if you just all serious all the time it's all like you know, uh, nah, it's just wrong Get it's just boring yeah. yeah if you laugh you you it's good for your body you yeah. know, it opens you up it, it, it just yeah yep and uh, do you feel your aspirations have evolved over time and if so how <sighs> in in the, we're a kind of an odd type of band because we we function as a band, we travel internationally, we, we do a lot of stuff, we sell a lot of CDs, but we completely self-own. Yeah. We do everything ourselves. So we are not in the normal business, but we have to function in the business, which is really a business. People are just trying to make money. Yeah. And in the business, there's only two directions for a band, that is either up or down. There's no compromise. Yeah. And what we want to try to do is find a level of stasis that we can just do what we do and carry on doing what we're doing, you know? Not trying to make it like bigger or wider or yeah, we're gonna destroy Australia <laughs> or whatever, you know, okay. stuff like this. No, I think just take things as they come and keep providing an alternative to all the bullshit. Because the bullshit world wants everything to be better and nicer and, and more exciting and more mm -hmm. stuff happening and maybe some will just not all happens it doesn't matter it doesn't take anything away from the power of what there was i find it strange still that we get messages on the internet and stuff like people that write like wow i found you guys yesterday i heard the, this and this song and then it's like a song that was put out 15 years yeah. ago or, or 10 years ago and for them it's just as fresh as the first day it was written yeah. it, none of this music is linked to a fad or to a yeah, certain it. type it's timeless music that's yeah. what folk music yeah. is mm -hmm. that's what people that fuck around with traditional music are basically working with timeless themes that would have be understandable to somebody in the 13th century still and somebody now and also somebody in a hundred years time although there won't be anybody in a hundred years time because we'll all be dead <laughs> <laughs> yep. but theoretically yeah and so what do you like most about your career and what do you like the least and this goes for each one God, David. <laughs> what I like the most is the traveling. Uh, I, I, just, I love to, to be places, to go to go places, hang out with girls. <laughs> of course, <laughs> the girls again. <laughs> <laughs> Having a beer at the bar <laughs> or two. With, uh, girls. Uh, yeah, with girls. <laughs> with girls. <laughs> yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. And yeah, I don't know. Uh, for me, <coughs> I don't. I don't think there's actually a downside to it. Wow. No, really. Yeah, you're positive. <laughs> well, uh, I don't know. I I just can enjoy uh, everything about it. When I'm not when I'm not on the downside is that there is also uh, times that I'm not playing. Oh. Oh. <laughs> but I sit at home, wait for the you for the show. show. All the yeah. right things. Yeah. <laughs> but it's true. I I really so cannot weird. come up with uh, yeah. Even when I'm after a show, completely uh, energyless because I gave all my energy, then I feel. A bit down for a bit, but it's a good. It's for a good thing. I don't know. It's, it's part. Then of you it. just do a little yeah. brain. Yeah, you yeah. feel. Yeah. You feel it. You feel the reality. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. But there must be a sense of satisfaction still, even though yeah. you're doing the typical thing. Exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. always there. Yeah. Yeah. If, if if it was really a bad feeling after a show and I didn't want to do it anymore, then I didn't do it. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, it gives a lot of energy. That's what we like. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I love just the energy, the interaction with the crowd, and the interaction with people, and just putting this, this, it's like a ceremony, it's like a shamanic thing or something, just getting this energy of all of us together, all our, our practice, our skill, or whatever we have in our instruments, bending, bundling it together and pushing it out over all these people that push back with their presences, and then you just get this cauldron of, of stuff going on, and you really become one. Yeah, it's yeah. And that, that feels so alive and so yeah. sacred in a way. Something that that's, that we've lost in this society. That's direct, it's real, it's pure. And and the upside is just being able to float on, on that that energy, to feel that energy and feel us all becoming better for yeah. it. Feeling that something profound is happening, mm -hmm. that you're touched by some energy of life. 
that, that is hard to find. That you sometimes find when you look at the sunlight through a tree in a certain mm-hmm. way. And it's very fleeting. Can't moment. catch it. But we can keep it for this, this, this concert. And I love doing that. And the downside is it's, it's draining the life energy out of me mm-hmm. because I'm sort of forced to give a lot back. Yeah. I always used to be able to recharge my batteries in nature. because But nature is so damaged at the moment yeah. that I can't really call on, on anyone. I don't dare drain anything nature because it's already been done too much with the other monkeys yeah. so the downside is sometimes just being really empty yeah, yeah. and then um, is it about shows like really actually performing or is it just um, it's just what do you like about the career in the general the the career, career. Yeah, that's, that's just a being lot. in yeah. the yeah. careers I was yeah. just talking about shows yeah you were talking yeah. about live shows because yeah, I would really want like to interpret well, the, the cool thing is you know the music uh, but that's become such a small part yeah. of what we do because we're self-managed. Yeah. So Steve and I have about like 13 day jobs at the same time. Um, and we're married, so... <laughs> so it's yeah. a 26 day job. Yeah, maybe, yeah. But, uh, you know, yeah. we're also trying to have a good relationship and, and we have a band and we have an office. Um, you know, we do everything from like Steve making the artwork, uh, designing merchandising, to us doing bookings and tour management, um, uh, Bookkeeping yeah. um, and arranging all kinds of you know stuff. Sometimes you write music too, and then <laughs> and then there's like, oh yeah, maybe we should write a song now and then. And then you really have at a certain point you don't sit down to make music unless you have a reason um, other than you know uh, I just want to make music. Yeah. That that doesn't really happen anymore. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you just do it because stop. yeah. Then you go like, okay, now uh, because I have shows, so I really need to practice this certain song, and then I will sit down to make music. Or we need to write songs for an album. Yeah. Then we'll sit down and write songs for an album. And sometimes they they still sort of happen now and then, but yeah, all the other things have taken over. So yeah, uh, that's that's the downside. Yeah. Not being able to do a lot of music <laughs> because you're in the music with business. The other stuff. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's very funny. So what are your future plans and goals with Omnia? <laughs> or as a musician? Surviving the apocalypse as a band. <laughs> oh yeah, that's going to be think interesting. That's, that's going to be a major achievement. Like yeah. like when the whole system collapses, like surviving as a band. <laughs> I think like, wow, yeah, the folks post-apocalyptic Omnia, that'd be post-apocalyptic great. Post-apocalyptic Omnia, yeah. I can just see that. Yeah. Well, we can play acoustic, so that helps. Yeah, that's right. We can actually yeah. play without yeah. any amplification if we need to. Yeah. And I have an indestructible instrument. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's made for carbon, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have enough heart. You just came out with the album Prayer, but do you have any ideas for any future album right now in the works? Or uh, Actually, yeah, we're working on something. Uh, yeah, we've got yeah. some stuff it's we're working sort of on. sort of top secret. So yeah. uh, it's going to be really interesting. And we want, we just wanna, we want to do yeah. some special things because next year is Omnia's 21st birthday. Wow. So then we're legal. <laughs> and, um, finally, booze. Ah, yeah, we can do it. Only I can have a beer in America. So we, <laughs> we want to celebrate that with some stuff based around the fact that it's our twenty-first birthday. Yeah. Because we, we that's the one we want to celebrate. Yeah. People sometimes ask me, well, like, why don't you celebrate your twentieth birthday? Because that gives you twenty. So stupid. <laughs> Twenty-one is much more elegant. <laughs> and do you have a message for your American fans? Uh, uh, stay away from the junk food, really. <laughs> yeah. Just eat, eat and television. Little, yeah. yeah, stay away from the television. It's all lies. Just switch it off. Stay away from junk food. It's garbage. Just poisons you. And maybe walk now and then. Yeah, go out, get some fresh day. air. And yeah. it's possible, but because this weekend I, I met a, a vegan mm-hmm. and she looked really healthy. She's American. But I didn't know it was possible because I know the stores and I look around and I see sugar and. It's no, uh, it's bad food, but it's really possible. Yeah, I promise you. <laughs> <laughs> and do, is there anything you'd like to share with your fans in general, all over the world? Our music. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's what we do. Yeah, we just share what we are and what we do. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys for taking the time to talk to your fans, and uh, we'll well see you sure. around, and good luck. Cut. Cut. <laughs> makeup. Thank you for what. Oh. <laughs> Oh wait, wait. wait. <laughs> <laughs> was this a serious pose? I can't remember. Was this serious? Yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's serious. serious. Yeah, we're we're looking at her. Like, oh. <laughs> Thank you for watching Groovy with the World, and be sure to stay tuned for our next episode. Bye. 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 <laughs> yeah, well, thanks, guys. No, that was, that was fun. fun. <laughs> I shall be pushing. <laughs> <laughs>